Aww, animals. Stop killing the forest. A heartbreaking video shows an orangutan in Indonesia desperately trying to stop humans from destroying his home. The footage was filmed in 2013 in Borneo's West Kalimantan, but only recently uploaded to Facebook by International Animal Rescue. In the video, the orangutan can be seen frantically running across a fallen tree trunk toward a large excavator. It grabs at the excavator bucket with its bare hands, seemingly in an attempt to stop it from wreaking more havoc in the jungle. When the machine moves, the poor animal fails to hang on and instead tumbles off the trunk and onto the ground. Two men from the animal charity can be seen running after the distressed primate and appear to shoot it with a tranquilizer dart. The organization claims on their post that they managed to rescue the poor animal and bring it to safety. Sadly, more and more habitats in Indonesia are being destroyed by loggers, leading to death and starvation in the orangutan population. Unless we stop the madness and start rebuilding, our future will look much like Borneo's forests. Gone. Those poor animals. Russian police search for thugs who dyed a stray dog pink. A cruel prank has sparked outrage after a stray dog's fur was dyed bright pink in Russia. The incident took place in the city of Izvizvik in Russia's Udmurt Republic. Someone must have thought it would be funny to make the canine look fabulous. We're not exactly sure how the dog was dyed pink, but we imagine something like this may have happened. The poor dog was picked up by wildlife volunteer Vera Ivanova after reports about it appeared on Russian social media. Vera took the dog, who'd been nicknamed the Pink Elephant, to a local shelter. Vera says the dog seems fine, though it has been vomiting. She suspects the dog is vomiting because it was recently dyed. At the shelter, volunteers have been washing the dog to get the dye out of its white fur. Local police are now looking for the person who dyed the dog pink, and they could be charged with animal cruelty. Dying animals pink seems to be a thing in Russia. Last year, a Russian writer was falsely accused of killing her cat by dyeing it pink after photos of the animal appeared on social media. The woman really did dye her cat pink for a pink-themed party, but she didn't kill it. Rastadog among dozens of neglected animals rescued from German home. On January 12th, at a home in Bad Unhausen, 62 dogs were seized, found covered in their own filth, the victims of years of neglect. This pooch's fur was so matted, animal care workers almost confused it with a sheep. When they realized it was a dog, they called in reinforcements to help give the poor dog a much-needed haircut. A thorough snippety-snip to leave the old urine and feces-drenched coat behind, a nice warm bath, and voila! Rasta dog is no more. It's amazing what a good pair of grooming shears can do. Five guinea pigs were also found in need of help, one with a bad hairstyle of his own. So bad, in fact, some of his skin had torn off due to the weight of the excess fur. After the spot treatment, though, he too appears to be in much better shape. Along with the guinea pigs, a couple of rabbits were also rescued, and in total, 69 animals were placed into two nearby shelters. A social media plea resulted in donated dog food, shampoos, a shearing machine, and some funds to help out until homes could be found for the now cuddly creatures. Meanwhile, an investigation to identify and locate the person behind this disgusting display of neglect is underway. How about we hurl rocks at them to force them to jump? A 12-year-old female kangaroo in a zoo in southeastern China died after visitors had hurled rocks at her because of one thing. She wasn't jumping enough. According to Chinese media, the 12-year-old female kangaroo was not hopping enough to amuse visitors at the Fuzhou Zoo in March. So to make her hop, some made-in-China genius decided to hurl rocks at the kangaroo. And when zookeepers showed up to stop it, her left foot was already nearly severed. The zookeeper said he had tried to stop the crowd, but nobody in the crowd fessed up to having thrown any rocks. What? The kangaroo was later seen lying battered and hooked to an IV drip in its enclosure, and the poor thing later died due to internal bleeding. Veterinarians discovered after the autopsy that one of the stones had ruptured the animal's kidney. For unknown reasons, the zoo said they planned to stuff and display the dead kangaroo. This didn't stop these idiots from hurting the animals. A few weeks after the incident, a five-year-old male kangaroo luckily survived an injury caused by the same thing. 
The Fuzhou zookeeper stressed that these actions are against the rights of the animal and somehow visitors just keep hurting them. The zoo now plans to install more security cameras, hoping to prevent anything like this from happening again. Where are Leonardo, Michelangelo and Donatello? Florida's animal agency is looking for answers after a poor tortoise was found earlier this week near Orlando, completely covered in what appears to be red spray paint. According to Florida's Fish and Wildlife Conservation Commission, two people picked up a gopher tortoise on Country Road 455 in the town of Montverde, about 30 miles west of Orlando. The pair then took the tortoise to a wildlife rehabber called Swamp Girls Adventures. The group took the tortoise in and named it Raphael after one of the ninja tortoises, or tur turtles whatever. The group said they were able to get the tortoise about 70% cleaned up after gently chipping away concrete and attempting to get the red paint off. According to FWCC, if toxins from the paint are absorbed, it can damage the tortoise's organs. The paint itself can also prevent it from getting nutrients from sunlight and damagingly seal the tortoise's skin. If the tortoise breathes the paint in, it can cause respiratory illness. Kim Titterington, who runs Swamp Girl Adventures, told Fox 35 that the group hopes to help the tortoise recover completely and release him back into nature. Titterington also said she believes that wasn't an accident where the tortoise simply got too close to a painting site. Someone intentionally colored him red. FWCC is appealing to the public to contact them with any information on how the tortoise ended up this way. Is this humane? An Oregon court ruled that a Southern Oregon couple must silence their incessantly barking dogs by surgically removing their vocal cords. The couple was sued by neighbor Deborah and Dale Crean in 2012 over the noises several of their Tibetan Mastiff dogs were making by barking. The Creens were compensated $238,000 for putting up with the noise, and the judge also ordered that the owners debark their Mastiffs. According to the American Veterinary Medical Association, devocalization or debarking requires surgically cutting an animal's vocal cords, which decreases the volume, pitch, and intensity of the animal's bark. The technique is considered a last resort by the Medical Association and is strongly opposed by various animal rights groups in the U.S. The owners told Oregon Live that the dogs were raised to protect their sheep from predators. However, the court ruled that their Tibetan Mastiffs weren't ideally suited to work with livestock and ordered them to debark the dogs or replace them with pooches that were more suitable for the task. The Oregon chapter of the Humane Society of the United States said that there are other ways to discourage a dog from barking, such as with citronella spray and shock collars or by simply building a visual barrier between the dogs and the neighbor's property. It's unknown whether the couple plans to appeal the decision to the Oregon Supreme Court. Scottish SPCA mistakes harmless snake for green mamba and kills it. The Scottish Society for the Protection and Care of Animals is taking heat after it froze a harmless green snake to death in a case of mistaken identity. The snake was found on a cargo ship that had returned from West Africa on November 9th. Scottish SPCA workers were called in and captured the reptile, which they thought was a venomous green mamba. They moved the snake to their rehoming center in Drumbo, in Aberdeenshire. But the closest anti-venom for a green mamba was in Bedford, eight hours away by car. And the workers could not find a reptile specialist who could take in the snake. So, due to severe health and safety concerns, they decided it had to be euthanized. In a freezer! Only after the poor thing died a horrible death did they realize it was a harmless green tree snake. It wasn't venomous and didn't even have fangs. PETA has, of course, criticized the SSPCA for their blunder, with Director Elisa Allen saying, If a snake must be euthanized, which means given a good death, the animal shouldn't be frozen to death. Major veterinary bodies, including the Association of Reptilian and Amphibian Veterinarians, said freezing was unacceptable. The formation of ice crystals on a snake's skin can cause acute pain. Scottish SPCA Chief Superintendent Mike Flynn said it had been an innocent mistake. He said the charity genuinely believed it was a green mamba, 